I believe that Senator Blackburn is on remote. There are a, a lot of questions that still remain. One, and I know Senator Kennedy mentioned this, but the National Guard uh, and the timeline that was there, I'd like for you to speak to that, if you can, the day of timeline. Because I understand that Mayor Bowser spoke with the Secretary of the Army twice at 134 and at 222 and with Chief Sun, uh, he spoke with the guard, the DC guard commanding general at 149 and the guard began to mobilize at three and the troops did not arrive until 540. Is that your understanding of the timeline? But well, Senator, I appreciate the question uh, I, and I, I'm glad you tied me back to my exchange with Senator Kennedy uh, because I, I fear that I may have contributed to, uh, to a little bit of a muddle here. So first let me say that my understanding is that uh, on the question of authority is that the D.C. Mayor and the U.S. Capitol Police can ask for the National Guard, that the Secretary of Defense has the authority on federal land, the Secretary of the Army has authority on, in effect, D.C. or, or in, when it's not D.C. state land. I, I really don't have the specifics on exactly who requested what and when. Um, and I understand why, why it's a topic of keen interest, but, but I as FBI director am not intimately involved in that process, and so I don't want to add to any confusion that's out there. Okay, so uh, then it would be appropriate that we direct that, first of all, to the Guard Command and to the Secretary of the Army. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Uh, I, th I think so, yes. Okay. All right. That sounds great. Thank you for that clarification because I do think that um, it, that we do need some clarification there. Let me uh, go to some of the riots that have taken place around the country and the crime that has seemed to spike this year. And um, previous to this, the FBI participated in Operation Legend. Of course, Memphis, Tennessee was a part of that effort. So we thank you for that. But let me ask you, is the FBI tracking extremist groups like Antifa or other radicalism that are connected to violence in cities across the country, the violence and the looting that has taken place. And we know Operation Legend wound down and ended in January. So how is the FBI going to continue assisting local law enforcement in these cities where you have these riots that have taken place? Well, Senator, I appreciate the question. I think uh, you've touched on two uh, very, very important but distinct topics. Um, so one is the, the violence uh, on our streets in a lot of our major cities, including Memphis, that, uh, that Operation Legend was designed to address. And the other is the violence that's occurring amidst uh, protests where uh, otherwise peaceful protests are hijacked by people who engage in, in violent criminal behavior. Um, so on the first, uh, on what I would call sort of the more traditional violent crime side, the, the in effect operation legend side, if I can just use that as a shorthand. Uh, we do think that was a successful operation, but it was by its very nature finite in duration. What we're doing since then uh, is trying to uh, work with our Safe Streets Task Forces, which have uh, representatives of, of state, local, and other federal agencies and to try to bring a strategic, intelligence-driven approach to the violent crime problem. What I have found, and I've talked with state and local police chiefs in, in all 50 states, um, is that each city has its own idiosyncrasies. There may be certain common trends, but ultimately there's usually some kind of, in effect, tail wagging the dog that is contributing disproportionately to the violent crime problem in that community. And if everybody can be working together in an intelligence-driven way, they can prioritize the impact uh, and dismantle the enterprise as opposed to just kind of pushing the problem around. Okay, let me, not to cut you off, sure. but to jump in there. 
because you're correct. There are different sets of issues around the different um, the different types of crime. I understand that, and I appreciate that. But I think part of the frustration is. Uh, let's take July 4th last year with the Hatfield Federal Courthouse in Portland with the fire that was started and how did the FBI and federal and local law enforcement agencies attempt to track down those that were responsible were it was this an extremist group or groups or was it individuals like a lone actor which you mentioned earlier or and of course in Nashville on Christmas Day we saw the actions of a lone actor and um, separately at some point I would like to get a an update from you on that but let's talk about what you're doing to track those groups Jeez. that are there or like in Seattle with the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone where they're just really uh, flouting the rule of law and uh, trying to abolish a police presence. So how are you tracking these anarchist groups who are planning attacks, who are occupy, occupying public spaces, and what type work are you doing to help protect communities from this? So sure, uh, so that's the second topic of the two that we touched on. So uh, we do have a number of uh, domestic terrorism investigations, we would call them anarchist violent extremism investigations, uh, into individuals, uh, some of the most dangerous individuals involved in some of the conduct uh, in particular over the summer. Uh, we are looking at everything from tactics to funding to logistics, uh, and we're pursuing all available charges against them. Uh, I think I may have mentioned in response to an earlier question, uh, that last year, in 2020, uh, we arrested uh, more anarchist violent extremists than the prior three years combined. Um, in, but in addition, I would say that in some of the activity that you've described from over the summer, uh, when it's targeting federal buildings, there are certain charges that may be available there, uh, as was true with the courthouse in Portland, and as is true, obviously, with the Capitol on the 6th. Um, but when it comes to uh, non-federal facilities, sometimes the charges uh, end up being state and local charges where we work closely with and support our state and local partners uh, as they bring charges. So we are uh, continuing to move full speed ahead. Uh, we've increased significantly the number of investigations into the kind of activity you're describing, uh, and we're going to keep at it. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Blackburn.